Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to install the Google Play Store and add a custom launcher to your Amazon Fire tablet. Since Prime Day was actually a few days ago as of making this video, I figured I'd go ahead and put another one of these tutorials out because there will be a lot of new users to these Amazon Fire tablets. The HD 10, which is on the left, was actually up for 70 bucks, and in my opinion, I think that's a really good deal. I've done a few videos on this. I did a full review when it was released, and like it sits right out of the box, it's actually pretty decent. But adding Google Play and a different launcher will make it feel like a totally different tablet. It actually makes it feel like a real Android tablet instead of a Fire tablet. So I've got my HD 10 on the left all stock. I've done a factory reset. But on the right hand side, I have the new Fire HD 8 Plus with the Nova launcher installed and Google Play. So I can access all of my favorite apps from Google Play. I can download them on this tablet and use it like a normal Android tablet. And I don't have to rely on side loading or the Amazon App Store. It's just all built in after we get this set up. And it does work quite amazingly on these Fire tablets. Now for this tutorial, you will need a separate PC, but there are ways to install the Google Play Store without that. I'll link a video in the description, but this is the easiest way that I found using an application called Fire Toolbox available on XDA's website. It's basically just a couple clicks of a button and you can have the Google Play Store, you can have a custom launcher, you can remove all of the Amazon bloatware on here, and it works absolutely amazing on these tablets. But before we get started here, we do need to enable USB debugging on our Amazon Fire tablet. So in order to enable USB debugging, we're going to head over to Settings. From here, we're going to find Device Options. We're going to enter this menu. Next, we'll go to About Fire Tablet. And from here, we're going to tap on serial number about four or five times. This is going to enable developer options. Once we have that done, we can back up once to the device options. We now have a new section called developer options. We're going to make sure it's enabled. And from here, we're going to find USB debugging. Make sure this is on. Choose OK. And that's it. That's all we need to do on the tablet side. Now we need to move over to our PC and get the Fire Toolbox downloaded and set up. Okay, so now that we're over at our PC, we need to download one thing, and that's going to be the Fire Toolbox version 9.0 as I'm making this video. It will increase in the future. Link for this is in the description. It's over on XDA Forum. If you don't trust XDA, go ahead and do a little bit of research on it. They've been around forever in the Android modding scene. So I would recommend go ahead and read through all of this. As you can see, this works from the Amazon Fire HD 6 2014 up to the new 8 and 8 Plus 2020 models. We're going to scroll down and get the latest version as making this video. It's version 9.0. We'll download the installer. Give it a little time to download. Now that it's downloaded, I'm going to head to my download section and we're just going to install it. So it's the FTB V 9.0 installer. Like I said, this version 9.0 may be higher in the future. I'm just going to install for myself and create a desktop shortcut. So it's now installed. You can launch it from here. I'm just going to finish up, close everything down. And we now have it right on our desktop, the Fire Toolbox version 9.0. I'm going to double click to launch it. It's going to set everything up for us. And now we need to plug our device in in order for this to work. Remember, we enabled USB debugging on our tablet, and that's really how it's going to connect to this application. I'm just going to give you a quick demo here. We're going to grab our USB cable on the Fire 10 and the new HD8. It's USB type C. We're going to plug it right in here and it's going to give us a little prompt here. Do we want to allow this PC to use USB debugging? I'm going to check always allow and then choose yes. And on our PC side, we'll be brought into the main menu of the Fire Toolbox application. And we can now start using it with our Fire tablet. So there's really only two things that I usually mess around with in here. Custom Launcher and Google Services. Google Services is going to be the most important because this is how we're going to get Google Play installed on our Fire tablet. So I'm going to choose Google Services. I would go ahead and just read through this. It's just telling you that it needs to download four applications and install them to your Fire tablet. And they're all Google applications, but that's how we're going to get Google Play up and running. Choose Yes. It's going to install the framework, install the Play Services, and finally, the Play Store. And this is doing it all over USB or over ADB to our Fire tablet. They recommend waiting about 10 minutes before you sign in, but I find it only takes about three minutes. Choose OK. It's going to bring us back to the Fire Toolbox main menu. Now, I want to install a custom launcher. So I'm going to go with the custom launcher, and we can choose it from here. 
You can experiment with these if you want the Microsoft Launcher, the EV Launcher, or the Nova Launcher. On my Fire 8 that we saw at the beginning of this video, I have Nova Launcher installed, so I'm actually going to try EV just for this video, but I would recommend using Nova. I do want to leave this checked. I want that Fire Launcher disabled, and we'll choose Yes. It's going to download the EV Launcher and install it to our Fire tablet. It'll automatically come back to the Fire Toolbox main menu, and uh, that's really all I usually do. You can mess around with the lock screen wallpaper if you want to. You can use Amazon Prime Videos, or you can use an application called Wall Changer, and you can set up whatever wallpaper you'd like. Personally, I usually just leave this disabled, but there's a lot of great stuff in here, like installing Google Assistant, and we can manage everything Amazon. So if you do want to remove all of the Amazon apps from here, we can disable all of them right here. Manually, you can choose which ones you'd like to disable, or we can do automatic. Now I leave mine going like this because really all I wanted was a good launcher and the Google Play Store. I can deal with everything else here. We're just gonna shut this down and move back over to the tablet. We do need to reboot the tablet one time in order for all these changes to take effect. So just hold your power button for about three seconds. It'll bring up a little window. We can restart from there. And here it is. As you can see, I have a new launcher. I chose the EV launcher. And I personally like having my tablet set up like this, either with Nova or EV. I think I like Nova a little better. I don't like this line of applications here, but I figured I'd at least test it out. We do have the Play Store, so I'm gonna go ahead and start this. And you're gonna sign in just like you would with any Android phone or tablet. So put your Gmail account in here, put your password in, and sign in to the Play Store. So I've just signed in with my account. I don't want to back anything up here. I'll choose next and it'll bring us right into the Play Store. So you can download and start running your favorite Android apps on your Fire tablet. And there's way more here on the Google Play Store than there is on the Amazon Fire App Store. And I'll just download one real quick to show you that it is working. And I've only waited about five minutes. I know they state to wait about 10 minutes, but it usually always works out pretty well for me. I'll go with Ida64. It's going to download it, install it, and I can use this application. I'll just open it up here, and there we have it. We now have access to the Google Play Store, and we also have a way better launcher than the included Fire Launcher, or whatever they're calling it. I just don't like the layout of that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching, and hope you got at least Google Play up and running on your Amazon Fire tablet. It definitely makes it a more usable device having access to all of those apps. And I do think that both of these tablets are totally worth it when you can get them on a deal like Prime Day or even just a regular old sale that Amazon has, especially the Amazon Fire HD 10. I will leave links in the description to everything mentioned in this video, but like always, thanks for watching.